Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In my previous video, I showed you guys how to create neon materials to add to your virtual environment. Now, in this video, I wanna show you guys how to set up your Unreal project so that when you open it up in Eximetry, you can actually change the parameters from your neon material in real time. So before going into the tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys the end result first. Um, so here I have my Eximetry project opened up and this is my Unreal project, right? This is the node of my virtual environment. And as you can see here below, I have two pins. One says Neon Color and the other one Neon Glow. So if I select the node and here in the pin values panel, uh, here it says Neon Color and Neon Glow. And I can actually now adjust these settings and the changes will happen in real time. So for example, the glow, as you can see, the neons are glowing really bright now. And I can lower it down again. And of course, here in the Neon Color, I can actually set the color of the neon. See, for like green, red, blue. And if you're wondering why it's only affecting some of the neons and not all of them, this is totally on purpose. I've actually set it up that way because I only want to change the ones that I selected and I want to leave some of them uh, as its original color. So this is actually really useful for a number of reasons. First of all, maybe in your virtual production, you know, you want to be able to do some last minute changes. Maybe the client comes on set and they're like, you know what, this the neons are too green. Can you make it a little bit more blue or, you know, uh, it's too intense. You know, it's taking uh, focus away from the main talent. Please like make it less uh, emissive and so on. So you can do this uh, in real time without having to go back to Unreal Engine, cooking, and then back into Axiometry again. But this is actually really, really useful if you have a project that will require different moods. So for example, you have a live event, or maybe it's an eSport event, and you know you want in the opening, you want the whole ambiance to be like sort of blue, and if you have a team that's losing and you wanna change the ambience to red, and a team that's winning, you wanna change the ambience to green, and so on, you can do that. Okay, so anyway, let's get into the tutorial. All right, so here we are in the Unreal Editor for Axymetry, and here I have my virtual set, and here I have some red neons and some white neons. Now, the ones that I wanna set up to be able to be changed later on in Axymetry are just the red neons. So the first thing that I need to do is actually add a tag to each of the static meshes that is using this red neon. So I'm gonna select them, like this one, I think, yes, and hold shift, and this one, and this one, and this one. And just to make sure I have all the correct ones, here I can check in the materials pane that it's, you know, all of these are using, yes, indeed, the material instance neon red. So now I'm gonna search for tag and under actor i'm going to add a tag here hit the plus sign and i'm going to call this tag neon there you go and this is useful uh because i could actually uh you know reference all the objects manually each of the ones that i want to be able to you know adjust later on but let's say you have like i don't know like 100 uh, different uh, static meshes with the same material, uh, it's gonna be a bit complicated to reference all of them. So it's a lot easier to just tag all the static meshes that you wanna be able to adjust later on. All right, so when you're done tagging your static meshes, you can now open up your level blueprint. All right, so in your level blueprint, we're gonna use the event begin play and the event tick. Drag off the event begin play and search for get all actor with tag. Right, and we need to specify that we're looking for all the static meshes that has a tag that says neon, right? And then the output is gonna be an array. This is gonna be a list of all the static meshes that has this tag. And then we're gonna actually need to create a dynamic material instance, right? Because if we don't do this, the material that uh, the static meshes are using, the neon material won't be able to accept any changes. So we need to set it that it becomes a dynamic material first. So which material do we want is the neon red. 
because that is the material that all these static meshes are using. And uh, next, uh, so these static meshes, right, in this array, in this list, we want to affect all of them. So we're going to need a for each loop, right? So all of them. And get the in executing pin. And so all the items in this list, right, uh, we are going to cast to it. We're going to communicate with them. So cast to static mesh actor and array element. We're going to connect it to here, the object. So they're all static meshes, the array element. And then here as static mesh actor, see, um, we are going to set material of the static mesh component, right? So drag it out here, further off. So the as the static mesh, right, we are going to uh, make changes to its material and the element index is zero. Uh, because uh, it's only using one element, right? These uh, static meshes are only using one element and it's the first element and it's starting at zero. So now what I want to do is actually the return value here, drag in into this uh, material pin right here. So what we're doing is, okay, when the level starts, you know, get all the actors, the static meshes with the neon tag and for all of them, communicate with them and for each static mesh, um, set the material so here what are we going to do to the material now we need to specify and this time we need to drag off the event tick because we only need all of this to happen one time the event begin play but for the color and the intensity of the glow we want uh, the materials to be listening to the changes at all times so it needs to go uh, from the event tick because it's constant it's something we want to be able to change constantly so uh, off the event tick i'm gonna actually no i'm gonna drag from the return value here from the material and i'm gonna select a set vector parameter value this is for the color because the color is a vector parameter value so i'm going to drag from the event tick actually just bring this closer here and the other thing we want to change is the uh intensity right and that is a scalar so a uh, set scalar value or scalar scalar i don't know if i'm saying that right so okay so we have here the vector parameter and the scalar parameter value. So the vector is going to ask here, we need to specify the parameter name. And at mine, I named it color. And for the intensity, I named it glow. If you guys watched my previous tutorial on how to set the uh, neon materials, you can see that I named it as so. But if you named it something else, uh, you have to uh, put in the correct name. And I'm just going to show you guys what I mean here. So as you can see, if I open up my uh, MI neon red material, uh, here the parameter is called glow and uh, it's called color. And this is because in my master material, my M neon material, here I set the parameter names as color and as glow. And of course you can name this however uh, you want. You gotta make sure that it is the same name as the name you use here uh, for the set vector parameter value and the set scalar parameter value. And now the last thing we need to do before we cook our project is get a symmetry color and name it and color. You can name it however you want and plug in into the uh, set vector parameter value. So it's going to get a color right from a symmetry and it's gonna change the material. And it's gonna be the same for the scalar parameter. We're gonna right click and get Eximetry Scalar and plug it into the scalar pin input and name it Neon Glow. Again, you can name it like Neon Intensity or Glow Intensity or however you like it. And we're actually done here. Compile and save. And now I can actually just cook content for Eximetry. So here I am back in Eximetry and here I have my neon color pin and my neon glow pin. And here in the pins value, I can change the color to whatever color I desire. Right, so like red, for example, okay. And I have to make sure there's actually some glow intensity. 
So I can change it to how bright I want it. And there you go. Now, before I end this tutorial, I just want to show you guys one neat trick. If you want to have presets uh, for the colors, for example, you want to easily switch between like green, blue, and red, you can right click and insert module and search for color. And you can find something that says switch color. Okay. And you can plug it into the neon color pin input here, select it. And here you have a lot of slots that you can set up with different colors. For example, value one, I can switch this to, for example, red. Okay. And then value two, I can switch this to, for example, green. Okay. And value three, I can switch this to, for example, something like blue. And now, tidy this up a bit, make it bigger. I can hit the triggers here to change the color, green or blue, and now I can easily switch colors as I desire. And of course, I can add shortcuts to these uh, triggers, right, to using uh, like a, your keyboard or a game controller or a MIDI controller, so you can change these in real time for your live event. So anyway, that's all from me. I hope that was useful. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to type it in the comment and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.